Good evening, and welcome to the Alaska Conference of Seventh-day Adventists online town hall uh, here in the first quarter of the new year, 2021. Uh, whoever would have thought that we would be in 2021, and yet here we are, and it's been an eventful year so far already. This evening, we're going to talk a few, about a few things uh, pertinent to the upcoming uh, events of the conference and uh, where we're at a little bit. And then we'll uh, entertain questions and you'll see a phone number on your screen that will you can text your questions too. And please text them throughout the uh, town hall as we don't wanna wait till the end and, and then maybe miss your question because it's not coming through uh, very quickly. So please do that. Uh, online with me this evening uh, is Elder Melvin Santos, our Vice President for Administration. I'm glad he's with us this evening. Our Vice President for Finance, uh, Brother Jim Jensen is here with us as well. Uh, each of these uh, brothers will be updating us on a few things. And I am Pastor Kevin Miller, and I serve the conference as the president. So welcome again to this evening. Uh, there's your text number there at the bottom of your screen, 360-362-0419. And again, if you have questions, feel free to text them in at any time, and we will do our best to uh, get to them. Before we get started, uh, let's just have a word of prayer, and then maybe just a short uh, thought uh, from the scriptures, and then we'll jump right into our, our meeting. Gracious Father, thank you so much for allowing us to uh, be here this evening in such a unique way, in a technological way that uh, generations before us did not have this privilege. And this way we can maintain immediate uh, connection with one another uh, in a way that is, um, is wonderful and valuable to us in this time, especially during this pandemic when things have uh, entered into having to keep us apart. And so as we uh, talk together this evening, as we look at what you, uh, essentially you're doing in the conference this evening, help our hearts knit together and knit together with Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. We've had quite a couple of weeks here, actually a couple of months that have led up to these couple of weeks. And I was reading through uh, a book called The Great Controversy today. And uh, some thoughts uh, that there sparked uh, an interest in what Paul had to say in Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, I think, speaks immediately to our time right now, right where we live. It's amazing to me that the, what we think of in the 21st century and how far advanced we are from all the other centuries in the past. And yet it speaks right to the heart of who we are as people, even in today's world. And the unique thing about this, this uh, little book of Colossians, Paul a couple of times uh, asked for this book to be read and given to the church in Laodicea. And of course, for people of prophecy and people who understand prophecy, that church of Laodicea stands up rather sharply, doesn't it, as the last church, uh, last part of God's people before he comes. This is uh, Colossians chapter 3, beginning in verse 11 and reading through to verse 15. Here, there is not Greek and Jew circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, flay, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, Bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, 
forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all, put above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. So just a couple of observations here. Number one, Paul says here, there is not Greek and Jew circumcised and uncircumcised. What's he saying? Where is here? That was my question. The little book of Colossians is all about Jesus being the all in all, as he says in this verse. Jesus is the here. Jesus is the one who calls us to him, and he is the one that we are here in. And Paul says, and, and this, is a, this is a radical thought, Paul says, there is neither Greek, there is neither Jew. In other words, there is, can't be any bigotry between the two. There can't be any prejudicial ideas, thoughts, attitudes, displays between them. Because why? There, here, there is not Greek and Jew. There isn't any color. There isn't any ethnicity. There isn't any of those things that we set up here on earth and are so proud of. In Christ, we all bring that together so that we can be one family, one body, one people in Jesus. And we are all brothers. We are all sisters. We are all of the same family, regardless of what we look like, regardless of where we come from. Not only does he say there is neither Greek or Jew, but he also says there is neither circumcised or uncircumcised. In his day, that was how you said liberal and conservative. There is neither of those here in Jesus. Remember that in the apostles that Jesus called, he had Simon the Zealot on the far right-hand side and Zacchaeus, the tax collector, way out on the left in that secular humanistic world that we uh, don't want to go to either. But in Christ, they were brothers. In Christ, they became partners in ministry. In Christ, they became the evangelists that their world needed that was so separated by the zealots and the tax collectors. In Christ, here, there is not Greek or Jew circumcised and uncircumcised. But Christ is all and in all, when we talk to one another, regardless of what, our, of what our convictions may be, regardless of what our political leanings may be, regardless of what side of the aisle is on, when we talk to one another, let us talk as if we are talking to Jesus. Because Christ may be in that person that you're talking to. And regardless of what the, the conversation may is about, and listen, we're in a great world, in a great country, in the fact that we can debate and dialogue our opinions, our convictions, and all of those kind of things. But let's do it in such a way that we can maintain the dignity and the personhood of the other. That we are not tearing people down just because we're trying to get our point across. Christ is all and in all. And then he says, put on then as God's chosen holy ones. Have you ever thought of yourself as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved to God? That is an amazing thing to me. Uh, where From where I come from, the things I have unfortunately found myself doing at one time in my life, to think that God chose me and calls me holy and beloved, calls you holy and beloved. And he says, put on then compassionate hearts, put on kindness, put on humility, put on meekness, put on patience, bearing with one another. Listen, 
in the world we live in, I can tell you, it looks to me like we're losing all of that. And when Jesus said that the love of many would grow cold because of lawlessness, he didn't mean because of riots. Because riots are only symptomatic of what's already happened to a human heart. Riots are the, are the things in the outworking of what happens when we allow lawlessness to reign inside. It has to be expressed in some way, and it will come out. But if we put on Jesus, if we allow him to have his way within us, we can put on the compassionate hearts. We can stand out against what the rest of the world is doing in such a way that we can become those people who introduce Jesus into these situations and into these mindsets. Bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. One of the things that has helped me over the years is to kind of reflect, Jesus, how much have you forgiven me? And when I am having that issue with the other person or the other side of the coin or the other whatever it may be, Lord, how have you forgiven me that I may enter into that same grace with someone else? And notice this, putting on above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. You know, if we want our country to be the kind of nation that we all look and aspire to, it's love that will get us there. It's not political ideology, it's not policy, it's not laws, it's not all of those things as, as necessary or good as they might be in and of themselves. But the underlying foundation is the fact that you and I will love each other will love our neighbor, even as ourself. We will take into account what it is that affects them and how I affect them. That's what love is. That's what love does. That's what love calls for. That's what Jesus did. He laid down his life so that you and I can have eternal life. And we need to be willing to do that for somebody else, even if we don't agree with them. And then we will have the peace of Christ ruling in our hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. In Christ's church, there's only one body. There's not a bunch of us. There's not different factions. There's not different cliques. There's not different uh, places to go. It's all one body. We're all one family. We're all sons and daughters of God. We're all brothers and sisters of faith. And tonight, as we move forward into 2021, in light of the recent events that have happened, we need to be as the called ones, the chosen ones, the beloved ones, the going out and showing people just what it means to have a connection, to have an experience, to have that saving relationship with Jesus, in how we express ourselves to one another. If you have a certain political bent, that's fine. If you wanna debate it, that's fine. But to get violent about it is not fine. That's not the way of Christ. The way of Christ was to go up the path of Calvary, up to the cross and to get on the cross. He wasn't there to put others on the cross. He took that away from us so that you and I could have eternal life, that you and I could walk together and to become the light that this dark world really needs. So as we move forward into 2021, let this be the, the ideal behind which we move together as a conference, as a Seventh-day Adventist church, that we are following Jesus and we will be the ones who will show the light in the darkness of this world. Thank you. Let's, uh, let's have a prayer together and then we'll go to our agenda. Gracious Lord, again, we thank you for the mercy and the grace you poured out on us. We thank you for our Lord Jesus who came here and stepped into our lives and he lived this life. He understood the, 
the hurts and the anger and the pain of, of living here in this sinful world. He understands what it means to, to take on the, the problems and the issues and the challenges and the barriers of this world. And he has the answers to each and every one of them. Lord, let us look to you and let us look uh, to Jesus, allowing him to fill our lives with himself through the power of his spirit. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. <clears throat> Moving forward here. Again, remember, if you have questions, please text them to 360-362-0417. Uh, let's take a, take a look at COVID-19 here real quick. Uh, we don't have a whole lot to, to uh, report on that's new. We still uh, have the, the, the same protocols in place. We're still in that time. Uh, this thing has gotten more intense uh, throughout this winter. And uh, we're finding out that even new strains perhaps are, are exposing themselves to to people today. The one thing we will do is um, the officers and uh, will be able to maybe do a little bit of becoming uh, to churches that are open within driving distance of Anchorage uh, right now uh, so that we can not have to have the requirements of staying overnight anywhere. But uh, if we can get to your church and get back home, we'll be happy to um, come if you're if you're meeting in person now remember to re meet in person we we uh, have these protocols that we want to keep in mind uh, are those protocols there can you click on that for us please real quick and i'll run through that so we we want to make sure we have some designated leaders to make sure that uh protocols are being followed those requirements uh, are make sure you follow your, your city requirements, your township requirements, uh, whatever they may be, those, those local guidelines. Uh, if they go above and beyond what we're asking here. Uh, face coverings, we highly recommend those. Again, make sure you under, know what your local mandates are. Uh, so you can follow those, all right? Here in Anchorage, uh, face coverings are required for uh, any kind of gathering, all right? We don't recommend congregational singing. Uh, it seems to be able to spread that uh, virus around quite a bit because of the extra lung power that goes into singing, and we love to praise our Lord, and so... Uh, uh, just be cognizant of that, that perhaps instrumental music or a special music that maintains uh, a 10 foot radius um, will have to do for now. Uh, distance, you know, we all know it's all been out there now, six to 10 feet clean. Uh, we ask that you would hourly just sanitize those high points, those high touch points, so that uh, we can keep this thing from spreading if you're meeting in person. No, no uh, food that's shared, no shared food, all right? So that kind of eliminates the, the potluck. Um, online service, we, we ask that don't forget vulnerable or uncomfortable member, members who may not be able to join uh, right now in, in person. Uh, make sure we're covering for them and then maintain attendance list for contact tracing if needed. This list is kept at the local church and you can uh, eliminate it after a month, four weeks. Um, and then signage uh, post your reopening plan. Make sure that people who come to church know, know what the church is doing in regards to meeting together. All right. 
So we thank you for how well everyone has um, been doing this and keeping everyone safe and following along, thinking about our neighbors that we share our communities with um, and what their, what their needs are. So thank you for, for your help in that and your continued um, maintenance. I know that it feels like we're, it's getting long and tiring and, and so forth, but that's kind of how we need to go. We need to just keep taking one step at a time, one foot in front of the other, so to speak, and the Lord is going to get us through. He's got all kinds of promises. Psalms 91 comes to mind where he'll keep, the, keep us in a refuge, not allow that evil to come near us and so forth. So one step at a time, we're maintaining our hold on Jesus and we keep uh, moving forward together. All right. So thank you for that. All righty. Let's go to our next piece here. So our camp meeting updates. All right. So hopefully next, our next town hall, we'll have a couple of our directors with us. We'll uh, have them give a little more detail about things that are happening uh, with these kind of uh, camp meetings, junior camps and so forth. Hopefully we'll know a little bit more about the details coming up later in the year as we're working on them even now. But uh, camp meeting updates for uh, our 2021 here coming up shortly, we have quite a number of camp meetings that are typically scheduled through the winter between uh, February and April. Well, June actually because of the interior camp meeting. But, uh, but right now we're doing what, what I call um, camp meeting in a box due to our, our bush uh, logistics and the requirements and restrictions that are in the bush. We cannot go out and have the typical in-person camp meetings that we normally would. And so what the conference has done is we are even this week recording uh, camp meeting material so that churches in the bush, uh, if you wish to have that camp meeting and uh, and have a special weekend, you will be able to do that. And you can do that in a couple of different ways. You can do it if you're meeting in person, you can do it kind of in the in-person way. Or if not, uh, these are things that can be shared uh, in, in, uh, to people around the community. So you will have the opportunity to uh, custom tailor it to your uh, situation and where you're at. And that's all being recorded and will be sent out, I believe, on thumb drives. Uh, there will be uh, things for the kids. And um, so that's how we're going to have to do it <clears throat> this winter. Our prayer is that this will be the last time we have to do it this way. But uh, if not, we'll, we're learning as we go. So that's what's going to happen for our Bush camp meetings. In, uh, in our Arctic camp meetings. Uh, the uh, South Central camp meeting, we have not yet determined whether that will be an in-person, full-on in-person gathering like we normally would. Uh, my sense at this time, it may, that may be um, a long shot, so to speak but there may be an opportunity for a hybrid option. We have to just kind of see how this goes. Probably by, the, by March, um, we'll have a better idea of where we're at with that. So, or whether it's gonna be, uh, it's not in a hybrid, or whether it has to be online again. Our prayer is that it doesn't have to totally be online, but again, we'll have to go with the context and uh, where we're at with uh, the COVID situation. All right. So our themes for the next few uh, years here, uh, you can put those up, I guess, and we'll go through those. So uh, Elder Santos was going to give us some, some really exciting news here in just a few minutes. And as we were uh, praying about where we needed to go in the uh, coming 
four years. The Lord put it on his heart, put it on our heart that we really need to be having a, a real um, emphasis on our personal discipleship and how that impacts other people. And so uh, for the next four years, we're going to be uh, focusing and looking at how our personal discipleship can be expanded to include others, to, uh, to witness, to share our faith, to, to do some evangelism and so forth, letting people know that uh, this world is not our home, letting people know that uh, they don't have to wait to, to die to enjoy uh, who Jesus is, but that Jesus is coming and returning to gather his people together again and we will where we will uh live in eternity with him and uh, enjoy the fruits that he has planned for us so we're going to be calling the those gospel disciples this year john chapter 20 when jesus returned from the grave and showed up to to the uh, disciples and said i'm going to give you the holy spirit and he breathed on them his spirit so that they would be able to then move forward and become the mighty apostles that we know and, and revere today. In 2022, we'll be going forth in gospel power. And it won't be by might nor by a man's power, but by God's spirit. So that's 2022, Mark chapter 16, becoming gospel witnesses, Acts chapter 1 and then proclaiming the gospel message in 2024, uh, Matthew chapter 28. So those are what we're looking forward to for our themes, not only for camp meeting, but for the conference theme as well throughout the year, as we explore and look forward to how we can share our personal discipleship, grow it in such a way that we can influence and express it in other avenues uh, that Jesus leads us into. All right. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Melvin. Uh, think you're on. Are you on mute? Elder Miller, we have a question. All right. Uh, somebody sent out a question on, on the previous slides about the uh, COVID-19. Could mm -hmm. minimal singing be permitted with face mask in place? Um. Remember, singing is highly recommended. So uh, put the, <laughs> if you mean by minimal singing, having a hymn, a hymn, uh, and maybe just a couple of verses, you know, I, I don't think anybody's going to come and, and close anybody down for that. Uh, but I would say let's, let's be very cognizant of the fact that while we want to lift our hearts in praise, you know, uh, Keep a song in your heart. That's the Pathfinder part of the Pathfinder model, right? Uh, keep a song in your heart while we make sure that we're doing what we need to do to protect uh, one another. Um, so I would suggest uh, if you're going to do that, that that becomes a church decision to do. All right. That's the only question for so far from that we have received. All right, then, Elder Santos, I think the next thing is going in and giving us a report about how the last year went and uh, our soul winning. Yes, I I'm happy to report. Uh, let's see the next slide here on regarding soul winning and advancing the kingdom of God in the Alaska conference. And this is really exciting to see what God has been doing in the Holy Spirit in, in our conference. I just wanted to, to share a little uh, 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 talk here. You know, people are always saying, "Well, I hope we can, we can grow. I hope we can, we can uh, win souls." But they're really doing nothing. They're not setting up any plans, and they're really not uh, getting their the congregation to pray and reaching out to their community, even though during this COVID nineteen. But uh, I just want you to know, hope is not a strategy, and this is where an opportunity for God's people, even when just during this time of crisis, to really pray and ask God how he can use us to make a difference in people's lives. And so just wanted to, sh 
to, to share this, this uh, quote here, uh, cast a vision that takes you to your knees every day, knowing that without God, it's impossible, but with God, it can actually happen. So this is what we want every believer, every pastor, every member of Alaska Conference to do. And just imagine what happened in, here in the last few years here. Uh, one of the things that we were able to establish was a, a discipleship evangelism church planting, planting advisory team called the DCAT and to work with our leaders and pastors to work in, in setting faith goals. One of the things that we talked about several years ago when we, we met with, it, with this group here is what can we do and how can we help our pastors and leaders? Well, one of the things that was a common denominator is how can we increase discipleship training and disciples and disciple makers in this conference? And so it was a wild idea because uh, we, we were talking about four years from now, where can we be? And so some of the things that they were talking about, if that's going to be an, a principle we can work with of faith goals, why don't we see if maybe we can reach 4,500? They were just talking among each other. What about 100 baptisms for a year? Because we really haven't done that in a, in a while. Now, what's interesting here is that if you can look at the statistics in 2018, uh, I want you to see the one in yellow, we really only baptized 42 people and with six profession of faith. Notice according to the uh, percentage of growth, it was 0.13. The following year, look at the one that's highlighted in yellow. We baptized now increased 58 people with 11 profession of faith. But notice the growth is actually a minus 3.31. That's because several of our larger churches began to audit their membership books and to clean out those who are not been coming. So that's what uh, numbers went down there. But one thing I like to share is this is, is what happened that the 2020 during COVID, 20, uh, COVID year. And uh, this is the numbers that uh, we want you to share to see here. Notice. By God's grace, God was able to bless Alaska Conference with 99 people being baptized with 13 profession of faith. Uh, can, can, you, can we hear an amen to that? Yeah. No, the percentage of growth is 1.84. I said, oh, that's pretty small. But let me tell you this comparison. This is one thing that blew me away, uh, friends and family of Alaska Conference, that 1.84%, take a look at this one, in North America, you notice that this is the statistics they had until 2017. In 2012, their highest was 1.77%. The trend is basically is going down in 2017. You see the number here is basically 1.03%. And notice God blessed us with 1.84 last year. You know, and so we just want to praise God. We pray that that trend will continue to grow and get stronger. And this is one of the things that we want to see more churches having opportunity, even during this COVID uh, environment, uh, where pastors are receiving more discipleship master plan training. And we want to go all out where we're able to to provide uh, digital discipleship and training and, and various opportunities. And, you know, we've been talking about this for several years besides before the COVID-19 and how much more uh, it is uh, a great, great need. And so with that, we just want to say, we want to praise God for, for what he's doing. Uh, this is again, we're, we're just talking faith here, faith goals and, uh, we want to see church planting. Uh, we want to see every church growing, uh, grow, not only growing their church, but also uh, being able to uh, grow God's kingdom in their community. So with that in mind, I just want to thank God for, for what he's done for us in 2020. And from, from, from the reports that I hear from the from uh, Elder Miller when he attends the North Pacific Union leadership that Alaska Conference has, has done quite well uh, in in the union in terms of growth, especially in 2020. So, Elder Miller, that's uh, our just a brief report of how God has been guiding and blessing Alaska Conference. Thank you. I appreciate that, and uh, it is exciting uh, to see what God has done in this pandemic 
during this pandemic and where we're at and all the online stuff we've we've done and, and everything. And I hope that we'll not leave that behind us when we move through this, as we surely will, but uh, that we'll keep up with it because people now are much more attuned to, to the, on the online world. And I wanna just thank our pastors um, in a very special way for their dedication and not just throwing up their hands and saying, now what, what can we do? but actually digging in, getting with the, the members of our church churches and saying, you know what? Jesus still has hearts out there that are needing uh, us to come in alongside and bless them. Because in each one of those baptisms is not only the person who was baptized, but then there's the influence that those people have as they reach out with their new faith and with their understanding of who Jesus is in their lives. And that has that ripple effect that begins to take hold. And so I just want to thank our pastors for that. I want to thank our members who have stepped up and said, you know, this is something that uh, we want to be a part of. This is something that we want to do. We, we can see how hurting people are in our, where we work and the frustrations and the anxieties. And how does Jesus fit into that? And so thank you so much for... Um, your wonderful prayers, and uh, and then moving into action on those prayers. All right, we have some dates coming up. You were going to show us there, Elder Santos, uh, so that people can stay up to on the calendar there. All right, so on January 18, it looks like the conference office will be closed for Martin Luther King holiday. January 22 through 23rd, uh, we have our annual elders retreat. Now this year it's going to be online when you go on the website elders and those interested, you can register there on the, the website and then what will happen is you will get the link that uh, the elders meetings will be, uh, be on uh, as we get to that date. We have Jose, Elder Jose Cort, uh, Cortez from the North American Division, who will be engaging us and we'll have uh, a couple of uh, other interesting individuals <laughs> that will uh, help us as well. So we're looking forward to January 22, 23. We wish it could be an in-person one again, but uh, due, to the, due to the restrictions that uh, we need to do it this way. But we're going to do it. February 7 through 9, pastors and teachers meetings on Zoom. So pastors, teachers, be prepared for that. We're doing our joint meeting. And uh, again, this is due to the restrictions and the logistics and all of that. This is going to have to be done through the online medium. But we're going to do it together. At this point, let me just uh, do a little shout out to our teachers as well. They have been working incredibly hard. I think the two, the two professions that have been hit hardest by this pandemic has been our healthcare professions and then our teachers uh, and the way they have had to respond and the things that they've had to do because it's added just so many layers on top of what they already engage in. And our teachers have risen to the occasion they have done an outstanding job of ensuring that their students are staying in their work. And I know it's probably frustrating when uh, for kids and, and teachers alike, but uh, they've done an outstanding job. And uh, we're certainly grateful for the team of teachers that God has blessed this conference with. So thank you. On February 10, We'll have our new in ministry trainings so or our, our uh, pastors who are not yet ordained, you'll be a part of that. And then on February 15, we'll honor President's Day again. All right, so those are the upcoming dates uh, in the next month. Thank you. All right, Brother Jim, let's take us and see what's going on with the financial world. All right. Well, we are just in the midst of closing December yet. We've got most of our churches that are in, but not all of them. 
And so we'll take a look at the final numbers for November. In November tithe, we were actually up about five and two thirds percent over where we were in 2019, and that was helpful. And then our year to date tithe is down about four and a half percent on the next slide. <clears throat> and so that's continuing just about where we were. Um, slight improvement over the prior month. Again, thank you each and every one that has been faithful with your tithe and offering throughout this year. Um, I think it's pretty amazing that we are as close to normal as we are. And then we'll take a look on the next slide at our expenses year to date. So we came into the year with the 11 month budget looking at about 5.4 million. And in March, our executive committee said, we're gonna to need to slice that considerably. So we revised the budget downward to $5 million for the 11 months ended November 30. Um, we're about 42,000 over that budget, but still in pretty good shape overall on our November expenses. Then we'll move on one more slide. And this one I'm pretty excited about. Um, most of you know, we've been raising funds for the Pioneer Campground Auditorium floor, and we are pretty close. This is what we had on hand as of December 29. I have a couple of folks and churches that have pledged to get us the rest of the way there, but I don't quite count that until I see it in the office. But I do expect that uh, we will have a group finishing the floor in the auditorium for camp meeting. And we are hoping, planning, and preparing for camp meeting at the Palmer Campground for South Central Camp Meeting. So thank you for those that have donated to that. Um, there's still an opportunity if you want to add a few more dollars to help us get there. Then you might ask how we're doing on Arctic Mission Adventure. And on the next slide, um, <clears throat> this was through uh, December, but without the direct contributions that come in from our churches as part of the remittance process. And I just got an update about two hours ago from Nita saying that so far what has come in um, is another $45,000. So that puts us within $1,000 of the original pre-COVID goal. So um, I want to just say that uh, Tandy Perkins has done an outstanding job this year. The Lord is blessed. And for everyone who has felt God's call in your heart to help the Arctic Mission Adventure, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And then we'll go to one more slide, which is our conference advance or the YES Fund. And this one has been hurting quite a bit. We'll see where we get in December. December is usually worth about two months of any other time during the year, but I still expect that we will be short on the conference advance, probably somewhere in the range of 15 to $20,000. Um, it's not where I'd hope for, but it just is where we are this year. And overall, I feel like um, the Lord has continued to bless the number of our members that have been unemployed throughout this has been relatively low. And um, I know a lot of the churches have been helping their members that needed a little extra help. And so continue, continue to do as you have and, um, we're getting through this together. And it's a pretty good report at this point during the year. Um, we should have all of the churches in by Thursday or Friday and be able to let the executive committee and you know what our final numbers were here in just a few more days. So thank you once again, and may the Lord continue to bless you. And hopefully the picture on here um, reminds you a little bit of taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Jim. So uh, we're very grateful for God's people. Um, 
we would never be able to make it through all of this without you. Uh, we, we pray for you. We love you. We're, we're grateful that we get to work with you. And um, we're looking forward to 2021 as, as uh, whatever may happen in 2021. Uh, so long as we can move together, uh, we'll, we'll be okay because the Lord has got us. He's guiding us. He's empowering us. And he is uh, going to get us to the promised land safely. <clears throat> so do we have any final questions, Elder? No questions at this point. Uh, that's been turned in. All righty. Uh, then what we'll do is we'll close with prayer. And uh, Elder Santos, I would ask that you would do so. Sure, I'd be glad to. Let us pray. Gracious, loving Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come together and connect uh, with your church family here in this entire conference. Father, we claim the promise in Jeremiah where it says, call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Father, we do not know what uh, lies ahead in this, in this new year of 2021, but we know we can call on you. We can trust in you. We can come to you and follow and your will and, and Father, seek to glorify you. Lord, you know, in our hearts, we want to see your kingdom grow in this conference. So we submit to you asking for a special outpouring of your Holy Spirit in a way that you will help us, Lord, not only draw closer to you, but also find ways how to help those who have no knowledge of Jesus yet to be able to learn more about you, to be part of your kingdom. Thank you for gathering us here. We ask for protection, Lord, from this virus. We ask for healing for those who are hurting. And then, dear Father, we just ask now that uh, you will bless us until we meet again. This is my prayer in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Thank you. And have a wonderful evening. God bless everyone.